Hello, 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 hello. This is the Digital Loop Season 4, Episode 13. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul. Very well, very well. How are you? Oh, very good. It's been a little bit of time since we haven't recorded. I was traveling a lot, plus I did the holidays. And so we're going to talk about the news that was uh, that hit everyone almost like a month ago now, which was that LinkedIn got acquired by Microsoft. Uh, the good thing about doing it with a little bit of delay is that we have more depth into the story of how it actually happened, because, of course, everybody at the day when it happened were like, what? This is crazy. Have you seen how for how much they bought it? And you know, why do they do this? It's a little bit like what we're gonna do today. We're gonna give our opinion about why we think they did it. But first of all, let's go maybe like in the history because then we know a little bit of the process of how that happened. So can you give us a little bit of the timeline, uh, Ivan? Yeah, I mean what what's interesting to see is that I mean this is this just not some, this is the type of stuff that just don't happens, right? That is just like, oh my god, we we just bought a company. Uh, this is a process that takes a lot of time. It goes all the way, way back to February, um, and and uh, there is a we're going to be sharing in the in the show notes uh, the link to an article that 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 shows all the process of how the negotiations went through, uh, and all the parties involved. Here you we find out that it was not just Microsoft, that other parties were involved, uh, companies like Salesforce, Google, Facebook, and one more uh, party which is undisclosed. And it's interesting to see how everything started, how you know everything was initiated between contact with Salesforce and then Microsoft got interested and then they talked with Google and Facebook and everything went back and forth between all these different players. And it's interesting to see how everything started, how the, the, the initial bid, the first bid was at, a, at the level of $160 per share. And then how everything went between going back and forth between all these different players, it went to 171, 172, 182, 190. At the end, it ended up at $196 per share. Uh, and I think that what made the big difference is the uh, the fact that it was cash only uh, they offered by Microsoft. Uh, Salesforce had, um, had a, um, a division between stock and cash. And I think that what, what made the big difference is the fact that it was a cash only acquisition. And also the fact that probably later on when they started to look deeper into what does it mean to merge and to to start working together, they started to analyze what are the ways that this could work. You know the, the synergies between both companies, um, and and I, and it's really really fascinating. We we really invite you to check out that article to see how the things are behind the scenes. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually I wasn't surprised when uh, because the first name we know we knew after of course the official announcement, everybody suspected Salesforce. Uh, yours truly. Uh, Included and of course very quickly it was revealed about Salesforce because it's true that the only other logical co Player that I was thinking and many other were thinking not that I'm smarter than, than anyone else was like Salesforce because it would also be part of this kind of myriad of of offerings they do as a SaaS business, as a B2B business, and they offer that to uh, all professionals around the world. It's interesting that, of course, like you said, Microsoft ended up winning, uh, probably, as, as again, as you say, it was a whole cash decision. Let's not forget, though, that February is not, the fact that he started in February is not completely innocent either, because LinkedIn just had a, a very bad quarter where the stock was hit because the, uh, the, the Apparently, the ad uh, business of, of LinkedIn was uh, slowing down. The growth was actually also slowing down, which are, of course, when you talk about social networks, are the big things because that's monetization. Uh, so if you just go to any Yahoo Finance, et cetera, you'll see the look at the, the, the graph of the stock and you'll see that there's a dip suddenly. So that also maybe means that it was probably the good moment to, 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 to sell it. Now, uh, it's interesting before we go into why you know X and Y bought it. Uh, it's interesting like uh, that probably Facebook and uh, Google were interested. I would say so. Facebook seems to have been like a very almost passive interest. It was uh, uh, Google seemingly was a slightly more active, but again these were like very quickly. These were were these were away. My take on it is that it's not about the price because again Google could have, you know, they have the means to obviously buy something like LinkedIn. Is it, there's two reasons. Is it simply because they wanted to see what actually what was happening? Because as soon as you start discussions, you can actually have a window that others don't uh, into the negotiations, but also simply because when you add it, that's a bit of the uh, snarky way to do it. If you are a bidder, 
in such a uh, bidding war, then you raise the price and you hurt your competition. So meaning maybe you know, you're Google and you just actually want to say, oh, okay, you guys want it? Yeah, I'll, we'll let you get it, but not at a cheap price. So we're gonna bid against you to have, to, because they probably didn't know or maybe they had a chatter or simply a hunch that you know, a Salesforce or Microsoft or whoever else was active. And there's always that dynamic when you have a bidding war, when suddenly a company, you know, there's chatter that is about to be, uh, to, be, to be sold, of course. So maybe that's simply the reason. You just wanted to actually raise the bar for the others to say, okay, you're gonna get it, we'll let you get it, but you're gonna get it at a very high price. So I, I don't think there's much to it uh, behind this. Now, there's a lot, of course, after this sales was done and that we can draw back to, of course, also Salesforce here, there was a lot of questions. Why do they do it? So, of course, we just said on the LinkedIn part, maybe, you know, there were some slowdowns, so it was a good time to sell. They wanted to get out, you know, it happens. What do you think on the other end, Microsoft did buy? Do you have a reason, a, re a rationale for you, or have you read something that makes sense to you as to why Microsoft bought LinkedIn or, or as to why Salesforce, because I think the dynamic would have been pretty much similar as to why Salesforce would have bought it. I think with Salesforce, it makes more sense because, you know, the characteristics of Salesforce business and the fact that, you know, there is the opportunity to have a real well-developed CRM and, you know, the whole business intelligence in one place, connecting it with LinkedIn will make it a, a very, very strong product. Uh, with Microsoft, I think what it makes sense is the fact that, and there is a lot of theories that this is what's going to happen, that the fact that now you're going to be able to Im embed LinkedIn with Skype uh, and email and other Microsoft enterprise products. I mean, this is going to be a, a stronger value for, for people that are, have, are, are using Microsoft products. Um, there are some theories that actually one of the main reasons why uh, Microsoft was interested in LinkedIn was also the fact that LinkedIn has this very well well, this is, is developing this uh, content platform. The fact that there is a lot of people that are actually uh, uh, writing and posting and sharing a lot of interesting content on LinkedIn made LinkedIn kind of like a digital media company. Um, and this is something that Microsoft doesn't have. So I think that this is, I don't know if this is the main reason why they will do something like this, but I think that this is something that also they took into consideration. Also, there is the fact that LinkedIn has about, here in my notes, 433 million users. Uh, there is about two new members that join every second and monthly unique visitors. So these are very interesting numbers for, for a company like Microsoft that in a way I think Microsoft after the problem that they have with the with the Nokia acquisition, uh, I guess I guess the, the, the management board they have this I don't know if pressure, but they are really need to look for something to get, you know, the dynamics of the company moving. Uh, and I think an acquisition like this gets gets the, 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 the balls rolling. Uh, and and it, cl it clearly shows a message to, to the investors that this is, uh, uh, Microsoft is not just sitting down waiting uh, to see what happens, but actually they are proactively taking action. So I think that this is a big, big part of it as well. Yeah, I do agree. I mean, let's not forget that um, it's a bit of the end of Windows Everywhere for Microsoft. They've been, uh, that was their cash cow for so long. Uh, of course, and now they're going into a slightly different way of thinking because, of course, a mobile phone has disrupted their business. Uh, this is why they had, like you mentioned, bought Nokia, but that kind of, I mean, still Windows Mobile is still very, very, uh, very low adoption. So this has not been a success. Uh, <laughs> but now, so. But Microsoft is, is reinventing itself in many areas, hardware, they also go for HoloLens for stuff that is very forward looking, They've, they're going to a more SaaS route, as in they will, you know, see now you can have your uh, subscription to Office instead of just buying the old plain boxes, you can have multiple subscriptions. And, and I think at the end of the day, Microsoft, and uh, you know, I work, you do, do you do too, we, we work with, with major corporations. Microsoft is a very, very strong foothold is in these corporations. You try to do anything with it, not with uh, uh, the Office Suite, SharePoint, et cetera, now Skype, of course, which is they bought it. And you, the, you reach out a, a roadblock. You have to be in an office environment most of the time to work with major corporation, and there are, Probably okay, the slow moving is possible, but at the same time, they're very loyal to Microsoft to keep actually upgrading the products with a certain delay sometimes, but they're using Microsoft products. So having 
as a as a corporate as a buyer of product is nice to have one and single environment so a, a, a series of suites of business which is also the same idea when with salesforce you buy one thing in salesforce and give you add add-ons and add-ons and add-ons which is more often than not a roadblock for startups because startups have only one single piece of the of the puzzle and large corporations hesitate to go into that purchasing decision they do sometimes i'm not saying they don't but so here it's one more piece of the puzzle so microsoft is trying to reinvent itself microsoft is going away from hard uh, is going away from this windows centric and try so which i just said skype this is another layer of you know most of these professionals a lot of people myself included sometimes we like to deride linkedin as this oh well do why would you hang out on linkedin we just share an update and you and you make sure that your resume is up to date or something but actually when you look at a lot of professionals this is a website that is being used the groups are very much active there are people that are truly using it and that could actually complement the offering this is the same let's say let's say it another way it's the same mindset or similar mindset than the people that use office at work so there, there's some overlap there that that is interesting of course there's a lot of criticism about linkedin linkedin the ux is still a, a, for me it's almost almost a disaster the app now is most facebooky while the actually the desktop version is still not but at the same time maybe these will be rebuilt maybe they won't i don't know but at, at least there's this overlap that makes some kind of sense it's the same type of of uh, so maybe you know in that reinvention of microsoft microsoft is thinking okay we need to go into networks so we're using something like skype uh, and and we're going to other type of networks we do something to linkedin and then we can start to kind of merge all, all these together and try to do something valuable i you know i i'm not saying it's going to be a success but at least they're trying and you know microsoft is very active in buying a lot of stuff for uh, in the, these past 3 years and you know maybe they'll they'll succeed so do you think do you think linkedin will radically change or do you think microsoft will more or less keep it the way it is i don't think it will radically change uh, i think that you will see you will see some difference in the way the the the, the the, the the user experience might might change but i don't think that they're going to make a lot of changes with that i think that it's probably more about uh, they will try to figure out how to bring Microsoft clients into LinkedIn so there is the opportunity to raise the numbers of uh, visitors which will have an impact on their on their advertising model which because it's still a very important part it's uh, ads represent 18% of LinkedIn's business yeah so uh, I, I think that this is thing interesting to see what is the direction that they're gonna take also the fact if you think about it Microsoft uh, did not have a presence in the whole social networking world. You know, of course, dominated by Facebook. Uh, Google tried with Google Plus. Uh, we saw what happened with that one. Uh, and, and I think that this is an opportunity for for Microsoft to to jump in the game of the social networking platforms. Uh, uh, it's an expensive, uh, and if, but you know, all of a sudden they are already present there, and it, you know the fact that this is a professional network, uh, which most of the professionals, whether we like it or not, use uh, Microsoft and Windows. Um, this, this, I, I think that it represents a big opportunity for them to actually, you know, complement each other's. Uh, products uh, yeah, will they do it in a smart way I don't know I don't know if I don't know if it's gonna be all of a sudden you know uh, it was so funny the next day after the acquisition there were some memes generated you know the, the new look of of of, uh, uh, of LinkedIn you know with a little clip that tells you you know from from Microsoft Word and and of course I don't think that they're gonna go in that direction but I think that the possibilities are there's a lot of possibilities for interesting synergies. Uh, I think that you know um, the, the 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 executives at both LinkedIn and Microsoft are really 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 smart. We had the opportunity to meet uh, the the current CEO of Microsoft when we were at the web. Uh, really really smart guys. So I think that you know we'll see we'll see. I mean it's an interesting move. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I was just going to pick up on one, one thing you said about these kind of merging of two different worlds. Uh, it's also simply because if you if you if you think about it, Microsoft already. So with Skype, they already had which and Link, which was the old version of basically what now it becomes Skype uh, business. They had uh, always these meetings and always on and chat. They already have, of course, contacts through Outlook and email. They had, 
of course, everything that has to do with collaboration. They had bought Yammer uh, at some point, the calendar, the traditional office uh, suites, but also all the customer account through people, you know, that again, these corporates are buying. So you have Microsoft suddenly has already that. And by adding the, um, by adding the uh, LinkedIn graph, suddenly they have the insights and they have the old these co-workers that work together that are already linked on LinkedIn come alive, right? It's not only um, I know that you're now on, uh, on, on, on Skype for business, so do you are, I can chat with you. I can have also some depth of information because we have already been connected on LinkedIn and LinkedIn gives you some insights and LinkedIn also goes into past history, which university as an alumni are, are you participating on? And, and also, of course, it, it helps HR as well because suddenly you have the entire like talent management that opens up. Uh, so I think this is, it makes kind of sense that they, they would try to buy it Will they change the, the, the actually how LinkedIn is? You know, it, it's a big thing. LinkedIn is a massive, massive social network. It's not like, you know, you just decide to change it. I hope they, they put it a little bit of flavor, more modern flavor, because some parts of LinkedIn seem a bit stuck in the UX department. So let's see what happens. But I think it, it, it might be that in a few years we'll say, oh, you know what, it was actually smart for them to do it. So uh, I'm not, un unlike a lot of uh, people, uh, just right after that announcement of the $26 billion uh, spent on LinkedIn, and they were like, what, why would you do that? I said, maybe, you know, like, give them a chance. Actually, maybe there's a reason why, the, why, why you do that. And again, Microsoft is reinventing itself. Uh, you know, they're, they're a company of very, very smart people. So I wouldn't discount them to succeed here as well with, uh, with LinkedIn. Absolutely. This it, it reminds me a little bit of uh, when when Facebook uh, uh, when Facebook got the offer by uh, Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo wanted to buy Facebook for I don't know a billion dollars, if I remember well, many many years ago. And Mark Zuckerberg saying no, and it was like, "Are you kidding me? Are you crazy?" I, I imagine I just imagine uh, his dad. You know, imagine you arrive home and you say, "Hi, dad. How are you? Oh, fine. What happened today? Well, we just got offer." billion dollars for my company oh my god this is great ah we say no <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 when you look now you go oh my god this guy's a genius of course with the, with the hindsight that you get later on it's genius, really yeah. it's really good to see it's easy to see that actually was a very good decision uh same with instagram purchasing instagram i don't know how much they cost a billion dollars as well yeah, yeah billion. Um, you can see that it was a fantastic move now they, they bought whatsapp you can see that it was a, actually a very good move so we can trust that the people running these big 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 companies know what they're doing uh and uh you know we, we'll wish them the best <laughs> it's not like we are you know stock owners or something uh, unfortunately we we didn't get any money out of but I've been a member of LinkedIn for a while, though. <laughs> yeah. And so maybe uh, maybe soon enough, we'll see our dear friend Clippy uh, appear on LinkedIn to help us figure out the UX. On that, uh, we'll see you very soon. Uh, probably we'll record uh, another episode uh, uh, quite soon. And as usual, as uh, Ivan always says when we end these episodes, you can reach to us on uh, Twitter at The Digital Loop, on Facebook slash Digital Loop. We're also on LinkedIn, actually. We have a company page, uh, though there's not a lot of followers there, which is why we don't, sadly, probably because we don't have enough time, we don't really keep it active as much as we should. But you can reach us there uh, as usual. Uh, so, and please, everything is on the digital loop dot. Co. On that, uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.